Well, I've had a chance to really look over the Acme cell filer and I think that there are going to be some things that we need to address. First, all of the connections, electrical connections, are in pretty bad shape. So we're going to address those and those. Probably just replace that whole plug. Gonna have to do something about that sweep belt. Some general cleanup of the gearbox, uh, make sure that there's enough oil in it. There's a little dent on the file shaving catcher that just bugs me a little bit, has no impact to the function of it. <sighs> we'll also just give it a good cleaning, crack it open on the side, see if there's any immediate issues that are going on there. Um, and just get her cleaned up. Okay, so we have her mostly cosmetically cleaned up. I scrubbed out some gunk that was in all of the different uh, crevices and crannies that I could reach on the outside of it. I did not go into the level of cleanup that I typically do on my machines, but uh, this one will not be staying in the shop. And uh, the next owner who wants it, if they want to go through a full detailing of it, they definitely can. I do want to make sure though that it is in mechanically good condition before uh, I sell it. So we're going to crack this guy open and give you a look to see what's on the inside of it. This thing looks absolutely nothing like I thought it would on the inside. This post here, I did not touch at all from a cleaning standpoint. Welcome to Colorado. I love the lack of humidity that we have here. The other aspects to it, uh, it is just, it's really remarkably clean on the inside. So either this thing was cleaned on a fairly regular basis, which may or may not be true, or it just didn't see a whole lot of use. I anticipated to see this thing just chocked full of metal shavings. And I don't know if you can see it or not, but all of the joints still seem to have a decent amount of grease and stuff over the well. It's super clean. Let's see what it does when we uh, turn it on. Look at that. Such a simple and yet super cool machine. So each of these arms have a pivoting bracket down here that they're rocking back and forth on. And then another up here. And then it looks as if this bracket here as well as the one on the other side just attaches back to this back brace and that back brace is connected at a few different points it's connected on these uh, with these bolts here as well as a big one on the bottom and a big one on the top so one other thing that I wanted to show you before I button this guy back up these springs here there's one on this side and then you can see another one back there 
They're just attached to the main casting with these wing nuts and their purpose as you move your arm up and down, which moves the file up and down. This is just your return tension and how much you know pressure you have to push down on the lever itself to uh, get it to go up and down. So you know you can dial it into your preferences from that side of things. But man, this thing is surprisingly clean on the inside, and I don't think that I'm gonna actually even do anything in here. You can still see you know some of the grease sticking out there from from where they've greased it. Uh, the noise that we were hearing from the machine, I believe, is just this belt is just totally trashed. Uh, you should be able to see that right there. So let me replace the belt on this guy. Let me you know, oil up the motors. It's got some cups down here, which a little hard to see. But they're there. I'll get those oiled. And then we'll check the gearbox oil as well, oil level, and see it. also see if it's totally trashed or not. Okay, one of the things that I noticed about this guy, the belt, you can't get off without a little disassembly, which shouldn't be a problem. Actually, geez, that's on my finger tight. Let's take this off here. A little rubber bushing. I want to make sure that we don't lose. And now, this guy. Just pop off. Yeah, look how terrible this thing is. For shame. All right, now to find if I have a replacement. So, per usual, I have a belt that is one size smaller and a belt that is one size larger. But, the great news is the people who engineered this fine machine knew that somebody like me was going to be working on it and they made a bracket that is wildly adjustable. So it appears that it is at its lowest, uh, longest belt setting right now. So we just loosen these four bolts on this side and we loosen these four bolts, or sorry, these two bolts on this side and then we're able to lift the whole motor bracket up by what I believe is enough. Now, for the bad news. That noise, that noise is because, well, you can't see down in there, but it's missing its set screw. And it looks like that's formerly where the set screw was. So we're gonna yank it off there. We're gonna see if there's been any damage. We're going to see how to get this pulley lined up with that pulley, if it was out of a line at all. And then go from there. So a little boogered, but honestly not enough that I'm gonna be concerning myself with it. I will take a light file to take off any of the raised aspects of it that I can kind of feel right there. There's going to be some grooves in it similar to what this one is. And then I'm going to find an appropriate set screw and stick it back on. Okay, so I got the pulley back on here and it's pretty important that this pulley and this pulley are lined up perfectly straight. Typically, I have a nice big straight edge that I I'm able to make sure that the top and bottom of this pulley are topic touching the top and bottom of this pulley all at the same time. This guy does not leave me a lot of room up here to be able to do that. So I've got this cool little folding guy that I think is it's pretty straight when you just look straight down it. So I think that it's going to be good enough for our purposes here. And the other reality is, is that this is a pretty interesting perfectly flat pulley on the outside. It's not the typical one that concaves, but uh, let's see if we can get something close here. 
Put my head in the way. So as I Interesting. So, so as I put it here, I'm touching at the top, I'm touching at the bottom, and on the motor housing down here, you probably can't see it, but there's a fairly substantial gap here versus at the bottom it's touching so what that is an indication of is either the motor needs to be tilted a little bit that way or this housing needs to be tilted a little bit that way so let me uh, let me see if we can adjust some of that with some washers okay because I'm brand new to YouTube I watch every clip that I make immediately after I make it. And I'm glad that I did because when I watched that clip, it became immediately apparent to me that I made a comment earlier about the ingenuity of the mounting bracket being able to be so versatile in moving your belt up and down. It is also uh, an area for a lot of deviation when it comes to the straightness of the motor. And so as you can even see here, which is what I saw as I was taking all of that time to explain how to look for the straightness of a pulley, pulley line, or belt line, that is wildly off. So what we're going to do is we're going to adjust it here first, and then we're going to see how that works. But before I do that, I always like to turn on the motor without a belt hooked up. That noise that we were talking about earlier, I want to make sure that it it, it it isolates you know the potential options if we kind of listen to one component at a time. So let's kick on the motor. Motor's pretty quiet. I haven't oiled it yet. There's a little bit of noise there, but I think that we definitely cannot blame the motor for the noise in the machine. Okay, I'm going to try for the smaller of my two belts. Uh, that makes sense. Like I said, this is at its bottom now. So we're going to try to put this belt on and then we'll adjust this up to the proper height. We'll lock it down uh, when after we do our straight test again and we'll see what she sounds like at that point. that life okay for the sake of progress I went and found my remnant sections of link belt here if you are unfamiliar with link belts they're awesome and this will not be a permanent fixture to this machine as they're not cheap and I don't think that this machine needs a link belt. They're really great for removing vibration from things and whatnot. The beauty of link belts are you can make them literally whatever size that you want to make them. So let's see here what size we need this guy to be. So when you find out your length, you just take it apart at 
that spot. And these things are a little cumbersome to get apart, but it's not terrible. And when you get it to the length that you want, you just put it back together. I buy these ones from Harbor Freight. The last one that I bought said it was made in Italy, which is great. And they are dramatically less expensive buying them that way than buying the red counterpart brands that you're going to find at Woodcraft or Rockler or wherever. All right, let's try this. Huzzah. Okay. Shabby. So off camera, I decided to add an additional link into the link belt. It was just a little tight for my liking. So you can see here, I want to give you a closer look at what I was talking about. So we're up against both edges of the pulley there. And then if we come down, pretty hard to see. Really close there with just a little bit of air at the bottom, but not enough to concern ourselves with. Okay, link belts on. Put this joint back together. Let's click her on and see what she sounds like. That is a much better sounding machine. Uh, you still hear a little bit of noise coming from this belt. I think with a regular V-belt all of that noise would totally go away but I'm pretty happy with that. So real quick note for the motor oil cups down there I usually use this 3-in-1 motor oil engineered for quarter horsepower motors or larger and because of the location of those cups, those are gonna be pretty hard to get to. Thankfully, I was able to pick up this cute as a button little oiler the other day, which will just fit oh so perfectly right back in there. So the gear to a reduction box is pretty simple. You have a oil drain down here. You have an oil level here. And then you have a fill port there. And then if you need to do anything to it, you can do it there. But for our purposes, we're going to drain. We're gonna put this plug back in. We're gonna take this plug out. We're gonna take this plug out. We're gonna fill here until we start getting a little drippage here, at which point we will put the screw back in. Now a quick note about these gearboxes. Um, almost all of them used some sort of bronze worm gear in them. When doing that, you definitely want to be using a non-detergent oil for them. 
I've had to use this in a few different machines of mine. My scroll saw requires it, my planer requires it. So uh, yeah, definitely make sure that you get a non-detergent option. If you get a normal option uh, for you know regular vehicle motors or whatnot, they have some sort of chemical in them, which I fully don't understand, that will eventually eat away at your bronze gear inside of your machine. So let's get that squared away. Okay, I think that does it for this evening. A couple things left to do. Still need to switch out the electrical stuff, um, the plug, as well as fix where the electrical connects the handle. And there's a little jankiness of the wiring over here on the motor that I'll show you when we get to it as well. So that, uh, figure out what we're gonna do with the light up here. And put her back together, maybe address one or two other little things. But I think at that point, she'll be ready to go.